Good morning. Will you stand with us and sing with us, church? Hallelujah. My name is Andrew. We want to welcome you to the Gitmo 1100 Church Service. We want to invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, God, for your love for us. Thank you, God, for Thanksgiving and so much that we have to be thankful for. God, I pray that you would uh, be with us in the service. You're already here, God. That you would speak to us, Lord. That we would just know you more, God, and be encouraged to be, God, who you are calling us to be, bringing the hope of Jesus to others around us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. You may have a seat for just a quick second. And if uh, you are here on a regular basis, you know there's a little shift. But as the Schmidt family comes and makes their way here, 
Uh, if you've not been here in past uh, Christmas seasons, uh, I just want to let you know during Advent, we uh, love the opportunity of lighting the Advent candle. And each week we will have a different uh, family or a different group, a different somebody who represents something come on up to light our candle for this week. And so, um, and then after this, this morning, uh, we are going to sing our first song of Christmas. Now I am saying this to prepare you so that you uh, can be a, as much a part of it as you need to. You're not caught off guard. We are into the Christmas season and excited about that. And so um, we are uh, blessed this morning to have the Schmidt family. And you can actually, and I meant to grab this for you, however, you can either use that or this. What would you prefer? I We're going to go here. There we go. So uh, um, it'll be there in a second. All right, so anyway, the Schmidt family is going to, uh, each week uh, our family is going to introduce the Advent candle by explaining a couple things and then uh, uh, reading some scripture, lighting the candle, and then we will launch into a Christmas song or multiple Christmas songs depending on what week it is. So thank you, Schmidt very, uh, family, very much, and I'll turn it over to you. So we are the uh, Schmidt family. I'm Robert. This is my wife, Kim. Our oldest daughter, Lindsay. We have Miss Lily right here. And our youngest, uh, Miss Larissa, is out in the daycare center. Um, before we light the Advent candle this morning, uh, we've been asked to share one of our favorite Christmas traditions. Now, I am a very big Christmas decorator. Our house is already almost completely lit up. Uh, probably got a thousand lights or more. and still growing. However, my wife, she beats me to the punch every year. As soon as... Halloween is done. She's asking me to break out all the bins of Christmas decorations. She's setting up the table, setting up the Christmas tree. So our house is Christmassy once Halloween. So 1201 on Halloween, we shift over into Christmas, the holiday season, the red, green, beautiful lights. So I think she beats me to the punch every year. Uh, however, mine is more physical being outside on a two-story ladder. Yeah, so uh, one of our favorite Christmas traditions is as soon as we light the Christmas tree, one of Santa's elves come down every night and kind of gives our girls kind of a uh, assurance that they've been on the, the nice list or the naughty list by leaving them a Hershey kiss for them to wake up in the morning saying, hey, were we uh, good girls or bad girls? Well, Santa's elves, they come down, put it in a little pocket pouch on the Christmas tree, and they get so excited every morning. So as soon as the tree comes up, all of a sudden, Santa's elves come down and we start receiving gifts every night, all right, for our girls. So that's kind of our little Christmas tradition we do every year, all right. Uh, today, November 28th, is the start of Advent. It's a season recognized by the church around the world as a time to prepare our hearts and lives to welcome the coming of Jesus Christ at Christmas. We track the season by engaging in several uh, rhythms. One of them is lighting candles. So one for each Sunday leading up to Christmas Day. Today, we're going to light the first candle of Advent, the candle of hope. God gave a promise that a Savior would come for many years. God's people waited and hoped. In Bethlehem long ago, Christ came just as he promised. This candle reminds us that our hope is in Christ, who keeps his word. He came at just the right time to be the living sacrifice for us all. And he will come again to usher in the kingdom of, of God, just as he promised. Now the candle of hope is lit. So reading from Galatians 4, 3 through 5. And that's the way it was with us before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. Please bow your heads at this time. Dear God, thank you for keeping your promise to us to come into this world. Thank you for your many promises kept and anticipated. Lord, thank you for this season, for these people, for these blessings that we are given each and every day, Lord. I can't thank you enough for the beautiful family you've blessed me, blessed me with, the beautiful friendship that you have blessed us with, Lord. It is truly remarkable seeing these every day. In the name of Christ, the promised Savior, we pray. Amen. Church, I invite you once again, please stand. Let's sing this Christmas hymn, O Come All You Faithful.
tis not in what I own, not in the strength of flesh and bone, but in the ghostly wounds of love at the cross. My in skill or name, in win or lose, in pride or shame, but in the blood of Christ that flows at the cross. And I rejoice in my Redeemer, the greatest treasure, the wellspring of my soul. we could just be in that place of prayer for a moment. Lord, my soul is satisfied in you alone. Lord, right now I declare that, I hold on to that. Father, all of the things that move around in my world right now, um, all of the things that bring me joy, all of the things that bring me concern, Lord, all of it, um, I just place in your hands right now. And I ask that you would be the, the source of comfort in, in my life, the source of comfort in our lives, Lord God, that you would be uh, the, the source of calm in the midst of chaos, that you would be uh, the source of joy and the source of hope and the source of all the things that we need in this world. Lord, um, we ask that you, as we know, you are the provider of those things and that we can receive that. And right now, Lord, we just hold on to that. 
Father God, I, I'm not 100% certain what has gone on in every life represented here this morning, but I'm so grateful that you are. And Lord, we take advantage of this moment, this, this time to pray as a family together as a church body. And, and Lord, without even knowing specifics of what is going on with one another, we lift each other up right now. We ask that you would continue to move in our midst and you would continue to touch lives. And, and as you are intimately aware of what is going on in our lives, we ask that you would move in those things, Lord. Father, we do, as always, we pray where there are decisions to be made for future plans, that you would give wisdom and guidance in that. Lord, where there are relationships that need healing, we ask that you would move in a mighty, miraculous work of forgiveness, of receiving forgiveness and giving forgiveness, of, of realization of where we are and what things we need to let go to you and, and what things we need to let go that we are holding on to. And Lord, in all of that, we just, well, we place that at your feet. And Father, um, we know when there are specifics in our family, we just rally around. And right now we want to think of Christiana, Lord, who lost her mom this week. And we think about that. And as Dora passed away, Lord, we ask that you would be with her family as they walk through this time that you would certainly be with Christiana as she uh, deals with this and that loss, Lord, that she would feel your comfort uh, in a miraculous way and your peace right now at this moment. Lord, we rally around her and uh, uh, we just thank you for uh, your mighty touch of, of peace and, and calm in the midst of chaos. And so we rely on that right now. Father, we, um, we continue to give you praise for who you are in our lives, for you, who you are on this base. Lord, and uh, we continue to make it known that uh, we will let you be our guide, you be our source. And certainly, Lord, as we are singing, that you will be the, uh, the source of our comfort. And so we praise you for that. We hold on to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, 
Father, we thank you for the chance to worship you and honor you and celebrate you. Lord, we thank you for your word. And as we turn to it, we in, invite your spirit to continue to speak into our hearts and speak into our minds. We give you honor and praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, you can grab a seat, and if you are in the four-year-old through fourth grade category, you are dismissed at this time to head on back and uh, join uh, your teachers as they uh, make their way across the parking lot. And uh, as always, thanks so much for all those incredible volunteers that make that happen. Hey, as they make their way out this morning, a couple things to make you aware of. First of all, we want to say thank you so much to everyone that came out on Tuesday night and helped transform the chapel, uh, getting ready. As you know, that uh, as we've mentioned multiple times, we're excited about this morning. Two th reasons we're excited this morning. One, it is the first Sunday of Advent. Second, well, it is the Chaplain Corps birthday today. So just so you know that, there's a, uh, that's very important as well. So, um, but yeah, thank you so much to everyone who came out and did that. And it's an exciting time of year. Um, there's a few things that are coming up. Hopefully you got a bulletin when you came in this morning. Um, there is a few pieces of information we really want to draw your attention to. There are three opportunities next weekend that we want to make sure that everyone is aware of. And the first is on Saturday from one to four in the afternoon, there is a Safe Talk seminar that will be held here. Right now, it's scheduled to be held over at the Chapel Annex at the Fellowship Hall building uh, room. But if we grow out of that, we'll move it into here. But uh, Safe Talk is an, a phenomenal three-hour suicide awareness and intervention. It's not just a GMT. It is like how to truly have the important conversation, how to ask the important questions. If you are at all interested in that, hopefully you got in your bulletin. There is a little... Um, uh, prayer card and on the back of that is a place to respond if you are at all interested in that all we need is your name a number and an email and we'll reach out to you and we will make sure that you have that if we can't read the email we'll call you and get that contact info but that'll be next saturday from one to four and then on sunday evening there is a marriage enrichment seminar uh, our credo chaplain is coming down from jacksonville to do these three seminars but sunday night from five to eight over at the Bayview is a marriage uh, enrichment seminar, uh, incredible important tools that we'll be discussing as a part of that, uh, for discovering love languages, conflict resolution, all the really important stuff for any marriage, regardless of whether at the starting point or been married for many, many years. And I want to point out on that, that if you uh, are here unaccompanied without your spouse, you are welcome to be a part of that. So we understand that, uh, that there's many that are in that situation, and so you are still very very welcome to be a part of that. And that will be held over at the Bayview and dinner is included as a part of that. So again, if you're interested, just jot that on that connection card and drop that in the um, offering basket when it comes by. And then the last thing, and then we'll move on, is just want to, there's a leadership seminar on Monday and it's a six hour seminar. So it's, it's an investment, but uh, this is really a, a phenomenal seminar. It's really about outward mindset tools and, and uh, I, I, in the little, um, a brief on it, there's like 38 tools that, to deal with things like collaboration and conflict resol resolution and workplace relationship building and things like that. So uh, super valuable. And that is from nine in the morning till three in the afternoon. That is also at the Bayview and that includes breakfast and lunch. So a ton of things there just to draw your attention. There's also in the bulletin some uh, always opportunity to sign up to be a part of some things like our usher and greeter team. And uh, if you're interested in that, you can just scan that that uh, little QR code that's on there. So anyway, all of those important pieces of information. But if you have any questions, if you're any interest, feel free to just jot that on that connection card, drop it in the basket, or grab me on the way out, and I'd be more than happy to discuss any of those with you. Uh, there are some Christmas items we want to keep everyone aware of. Of course, we have the Christmas concert. We know that is the cantata, and we're, we're doing a slow roll on dropping the cantata and just calling Christmas concert. But anyway, that is December 18th, and we're super looking forward to that. And then uh, Christmas Eve service will be here at 6. And then on the Sunday after Christmas, we will be going to Windmill Beach to do a beach cleanup day and breakfast at the beach. And that'll be our service that morning. So a ton of great things coming up around the corner. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page uh, with that. But as I mentioned, today being the first Sunday of Advent, um, there are some great bits uh, uh, to, to talk about. And the Advent season is really about preparing ourselves, preparing our hearts to fully experience what Christmas is and what the Christmas season should be and is all about. 
Now, I'm not sure if you are familiar with Life Church TV. Life Church is, a, is really, a, I mean, I guess you could go with the term mega church. It's a very large church. But if you have a Bible app on your phone, the YouVersion Bible app, which is uh, by far the most used Bible app, then you're familiar with Life Church because they're the producers of that. Matter of fact, Life Church TV or YouVersion, these, these folks, um, they produce some incredible resources that, uh, that we use, I've used for so many, many years in church life. And uh, I mean, they've got incredible resources for, uh, for preaching, incredible resources for children's ministry and for worship. I, I know some churches that pretty much their entire, everything that they use, all their resources come from Life Church TV. Now, I'm not necessarily advertising that. The reason I'm telling you that is what I find very interesting is that Life Church TV doesn't charge a penny for that stuff. That app that's on your phone, that Bible app, all these things, they don't charge anything for that. They're a thing that they produce as a church and then they give away. And one could scratch their head and say, why on earth would they do that? Why would they give all of those resources when they could charge and make a pretty penny for that? And the reason they do that can be found in their list of values as a church. If you go to their church website, they have a list of values. And the second value is that says this, it says, we will do anything short of sin to reach people who don't know Christ. That is a great value. We will do anything short of sin to reach people for Christ. I, I love that little addendum. I, I don't know if that wasn't there at the beginning and then after a couple very uh, uh, creative folks did some things, they thought, let's put that part in there. All right, so, but we will do anything short of sin to reach people for Christ. And the reason I think that's an incredible value is because we should live our life like that. But more than that, that's pretty much God's gig. That's pretty much what God is all about. And the Advent season and the story of Christmas is really about like this conversation between the Trinity where, where Jesus looks to the Father and basically says, let's do this thing. Let's do whatever it takes short of sin to reach people. And the story of Christmas is about God doing that very thing, about God just extending all ends to reach us and make sure that we have an opportunity to be reunited with God. And really, when we say it this way, Christmas is about celebrating God's choice to be with us, which is right out of that very same value. This idea that we're rolling through here, we're going to be talking about the importance of, of Christmas being about God choosing to be with us. And, and that is the overall Christmas message. God has chose to come down and to live on earth. You know, we, the term we use for this is incarnation. And it really is just that. It's in the flesh. That's what that word means. It means God, the Father, chose to come to earth to live with us in the flesh as a human being. And that is the person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ. God in the flesh. God among us. Now, remember, this had been talked about for a long time before the first century. Seven or eight hundred years before that, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14, says, all right then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. That's the exact same word and phraseology that's picked up in the book of Matthew when it tells the story of Jesus' birth. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So this is the gift. This is the great gift of Christmas. This is the importance. This is why this is such a huge deal for us. 
because we believe in the importance of God choosing to take on human flesh and to come and live a life among us in the person of Jesus Christ. But just like any maybe unexpected gift that comes, it is a valid thing when we receive a gift, a gift that we're a little unsure of and, and uh, it's unusual to us to ask, well, what does it do? What does this gift do? What can I use this gift for? Well, the same thing, if God choosing to be with us is a gift for us, it's worth asking that same question. And over the next four weeks, we're going to explore what we get out of this gift that is given to us. And so at the risk of kind of spoiler alert and just telling what we're going to be covering over the next four weeks, it's really this. Over the next four weeks, we're going to wrestle with God's choice to be with us and the fact that it gives us these things, that the reality that, that God came to give us community. And then the second, next week, we're going to talk about that God came to give us knowledge of himself. And then we're going to look at how the fact that God came to give us an abundant life uh, here on earth as well as in the eternal life. And then the reality that God came to give us a hope that will help us endure through whatever things might be going on in our life. And those are the realities of what this gift means for us. And each week we're just going to tackle one of those. And, and uh, so, as we mentioned, if, if the first, if the, the, the Christmas is a celebration of the gift of community, Let's talk about what that community looks like. Let's talk about what that means for you and I today in our life. And the first thing when we talk about community and the importance of community and why that's really a gift for us is we have to realize this reality that community was God's idea from the very beginning. This sense of community, our sense of community, being a part of community, it was really God's idea from the very, very beginning. Genesis, first book in the Bible, chapter 2. Starting with verse 18 says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed uh, from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would call them, and the man chose a name for each one. He gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, all the wild animals, but still there was no helper just right for him. The reality that God was in the process of building and making sure that we had something to have community with. But even before God creates a woman, God creates man and woman, there's this idea in Genesis 126 where God says, then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea and the birds of the sky and the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth and the smallest animals that scurry along the ground. From the very beginning of the book of Genesis, we see this kind of plurality that is going on with God. And the, the, the Hebrew term, the Hebrew word used for that, regardless of what translation you use today, it's called Elohim. And Elohim is this weirdly plural word when God refers to himself. Let us make man in our own image. Not sure everyone's background, but, but this, th- we hold on very tightly to this concept of we believe in this concept of the Trinity, one God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the, the, the Trinity, the triune God was present, and, and it's not that one created the other, that has always been who God is, and they've been in community with one another and unified with one another from the very beginning. And at the very beginning, we see God said, let us make man in our own image. Let's share a bit of our community with this man that we are about to make, with this human being, these men and women. Let's let's make them a part of the community that we have right now. And basically, we were created and invited into God's community. Obviously, marriage draws a great picture for the human relationship of community with this idea of a, of a helper, someone who's intimate, someone who's unified, this idea of the two will become one flesh. We have always been designed for that. I had a, a one semester when I was in college at Azusa Pacific that I couldn't afford to get back into school, so I, I went to a community college for a semester, Fullerton, Fullerton Community College. And I had a history professor at Fullerton Community College who, uh, what I loved is that he summed up all of the world's conflicts, all of the world's challenges, all of the world's issues with this one phrase that he said over and over and over again, and it was, 
folks is gonna get together. That's how he always said it. Folks is gonna get together. And really what he was saying is, is man, we will fight for community. Like all of the issues of our world, all of the, the, the challenges, whether you're talking about wars, whether you're talking about uh, the things that we're passionate about, things that we go do, that we chase after, all of it really has to do with community, either protecting our community, fighting for community, fighting for someone. But he always is, as you came back to, folks is going to get together, which is another way of saying we are built for community and we will do most anything to fight for and protect that community. Community with one another as couples. Community with one another as a society. And community with God. And, and we were created for that. But the second thing we have to understand in this understanding of community is that sin was and is a community breaker. It's a community killer. From the first sin recorded in the Bible to the sin that is in our life today, sin destroys community. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2 says, It is your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. So God built man and woman. He created this community. And, and, and he invited them to share in this community. We see in the creation account in the book of Genesis that one of the things God loved to do in the evenings, in the cool of the evening, he would come down and he would walk through the garden with Adam and Eve and just spend time with them because that was the purpose of the whole thing. But in case you're not familiar with the, the, the fall, the sin account in the book of Genesis, the serpent comes and he says, you know, he starts to tempt them about this tree that they're not allowed to eat the fruit of. And he starts to say, well, surely you can. And if you do that, you're going to become like God. And he tempts and then ultimately they, they do. They sin. They do the one thing that God had said they couldn't do. And their eyes are open to the concept of good and evil. And in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, again it says, In the cool of the evening, God came walking in the garden looking for them, but they were hiding because they were now ashamed of their nakedness. And they were ashamed to be near God in that state. And right from that moment, their community, this incredible community, was broken. And we've been dealing with the ramifications of that ever since. And ultimately, they're cast out of the garden. No more community, no more walks with God in that way. You know, a few years after uh, Lori and I were married, we had a chance to go to Israel. And, and uh, I remember, whereas I still am today, like when we're off and we're doing something different or we're in a different place, we're, we're obviously very protective of each other. I'm very protective of her and, and I like to make sure that the situation is somewhat controlled. I, I, I remember as we were leaving Israel, we'd been there, had this great trip. We were at Ben Gurion Airport in Tel Aviv, and, and uh, if you've ever been through Tel Aviv, you know that, that because of the nature of what goes on around there, they do not mess around with security at Tel Aviv Airport, right? I mean, they're, they're, is, they're not about smiling, not about making your trip happy, it's not about having a good day, it's about safety first. And I remember as we were standing in this line, getting ready to go in through the international portion, that uh, these soldiers began to come down the line, and they began to look at different, and all of a sudden they stopped at us, and they began to ask my wife a couple questions. And uh, Lori will tell you, like, you know, she used to always say, like, uh, the thing about whatever, like, you know, dogs can smell fear. That's not good because if she knows dogs can smell fear, she will be afraid. And so, so anyway, she said in that moment, they begin to ask questions and she had absolutely nothing to hide yet. Just being asked questions by these guys with machine guns was uh, unnerving enough that, that she was pretty uh, stuttery back in her responses to the point that they decided she must be a threat and they removed her from line and took her away. Now I started, you know, as I'm thinking, I can't believe this is happening. I started to go with and they were not having that. And they made it very clear to me that I was not invited to come with whatever was about to happen. And they took my wife away into this room and closed the door. I, I say, I'll, anyway, she was fine. And of course, she was back in a few minutes and they realized she was definitely no threat to the nation of Israel. However, in those few moments, man, I was a train wreck. I mean, I was like, this was just a, a terrible moment. I didn't know what to do. And, and I, I just felt like so out of sorts, like the, the, you know, the, the, my, my partner, my wife, you know, she's over there and I'm here and I can't be with her. Now let me, and it was just this terrible feeling, which is just this tiny, minuscule picture of that separation we have from the God that created us and how he feels because of our separation from him. 
And this whole Christmas story, this whole thing that we, that we celebrate is about doing something about this separation that sin has caused. When we are built for something and we are built for community with one another and we are built for community with God and that thing is kept away, we feel that emptiness. We feel that loss. And so many of our issues in this world stem from trying to figure out a way to fill that void of that separated community from God. But make no mistake about it, we are built for community and sin is a community destroyer, which leads to the third great truth and celebration of Christmas. And that's the reality that God sent his son to save people and restore community. This whole story of Christmas is about God sending his son to save people and restore community. And this uh, verse captures this as well as any. 2 Corinthians 5, 19 through 21. Actually, if I can start in 18 and then we'll pick up. It says, and all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us the task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sin against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. This passage lays it all out. Our sin had separated us from God. God's gift was not to ignore the sin and say, ah, we're not going to worry about that. But instead, it was to pay dearly for that sin and to make a way for us to get back to him. He paid our debt. And the job of anyone who's accepted that truth is now to tell others about the truth. The relationship that you and I truly long for is possible because Christ made it possible. And that is the great gift of community at Christmas. And, and one of the greatest illustrations of, of this kind of restoration work that God does, remember the story, remember Peter on the night that Jesus was betrayed, on the night that he was arrested. Remember how he talked such a big game about how he would be there and, and I don't care about the rest of these guys, but if something happens to you, I'm going to be standing there right next to you. And after Jesus had been arrested and, and he was apart from him, And then he was asked, don't you know Jesus? And he denied him and he went through and he denied Jesus three times before the realization of he did exactly what God warned that he was going to do. And Peter is just crushed. On the night where Jesus was betrayed, when he wanted to be there the most, he absolutely blew it and let him down. And I love that that's not the end of the story. I love that a little farther in the book, we get to read in John chapter 21, there's this great story after Jesus' death and his resurrection as he gets put in the tomb and then he raises from the dead and he comes out of there. There's this morning where he is sitting on the Sea of Galilee having breakfast with Peter. And I mean, they're sitting by the fire and, and there's this moment where he starts to ask Peter these questions. Like, Peter, do you love me? Well, Jesus, you know that I love you. Well, then feed my sheep. Then he asked him again, now, Peter, do you really love me? You know that I love you. Well, feed my sheep. Then he asked him a third time, Peter, do you love me? And Peter's crushed that he has to ask him three times. Jesus, you know that I love you. And Jesus looks at him and he says, then feed my sheep. And there's this moment of realization for Peter that this was just as he denied Jesus three times. Jesus wanted to hear him say, he wanted him to hear it three times to say, oh buddy, I still have so much for you. Of course you are forgiven. I know that you love me and your shortcomings have no part in that. And there's this, this is this beautiful restoration moment that we need to hold on to and remember that that's what this is all about. This Christmas story is a story of restoration. It is the gift of God coming among us so that we can be restored in the community that whether we know it or not, we deeply, deeply long for. And so we get excited about this. Let me just close by saying this Christmas, let's prepare our hearts by by reflecting on this gift of community that has been given 
And if you are saved, if you are someone who has called on the name of Jesus in your life, commit to remembering that gift. Commit to remembering what this is about and, and what it means for you and I. That we are not separated or bound by our sinfulness, our past, but it is paid and forgiven, both our past and our present and our future sins. And we can, we can enjoy that gift that was given to us freely. But if you're not, maybe you've been kind of looking at these things from a distance. Maybe you've been trying to figure out what this is all about, but there's so many questions. And that's okay that there's so many questions. But maybe the great thing this Christmas, the great way of preparing this Christmas is to ask, is it finally time? When Paul wrote to the Romans, uh, he was so very clear in Romans chapter 10, 9. He said, look, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and, and just really quick as a sidebar, please don't ever think that means there can be zero, no doubts. There can be no questions. Like, like we can believe something in our heart while we're still trying to figure out what that means, what it looks like, what on earth is all the implications of this. We can still have questions and still believe something in our heart. But Peter says to the Romans, look, this is it. All the stuff we talk about, all the things we make church be, it really boils down to this very, very simple thing. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. That's what this Christmas message is. That's the truth of this. Romans 10, 13 says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And there's no magic formula to those words. Um, we talk about it from the very youngest. It's covered over in our children's ministry area. We talk about the ABCs of making a decision for Christ, admitting that I'm a sinner, believing that there's a, real, uh, a risen Lord, and then confessing to make him the Lord of my life. Confess that he is the Lord of my life. I just want to ask as I close this morning that I, if there is anybody here this morning and and I, over the years, many, many, many years of doing this, you know, there's times where I don't ever want to put somebody on the spot and make them feel like, but there are times where being on the spot is just okay, especially at a time of year like this. And uh, th there is no skin off my back other than the fact to want to make sure to know that everybody here understands a relationship with Christ is that simple. And it is required of each of us at some point. And it would be a shame to go into this Christmas season and just kind of whisk over that. So I'm going to ask this morning and then I'm going to pray. But is there anybody here right now, just in this moment, who is just like, I I've known this, but I've never actually prayed this. And this would be the time to do it. Is there anybody this morning that's like, I'm done. I'm done fighting that. I don't got it all figured out, but I'm, I'm ready to pray that prayer. And we're just going to pray that prayer together right now. If there's anybody that needs to make that prayer. That's good news. But if you walk out of here or if after service you're like, eh, sort of maybe, come please come talk to me or talk to someone else. Because it's a very simple prayer and it's a very important prayer. And that's how we prepare ourselves for this Christmas season and certainly by holding on to that truth. Would you pray with me? Father, Lord, right now I just, uh, I recognize all just that we recognize the incredible amount of work that you have done to restore us. The incredible amount of work that you have done, the incredible price that you paid so that our debt can be paid and we can have a restored community with you. Uh, we thank you for that. We know that you, we acknowledge that you built us for that community and then you did everything needed to bring us back into that community as a result of our own sinfulness. So we give you praise and we celebrate that. We will hold on to that truth to this Christmas season. Father, for anybody here this morning who just maybe isn't ready to publicly put that hand up there, but knows that there is this wrestle going on in heart, that there would be that remembrance, that it is simply, Lord, I admit I'm a sinner. I believe you defeated my sin on the cross, and I invite you to be the Lord of my life. And I just pray, Lord, that you would just uh, not let distractions or other things prevent us from praying a prayer like that. So we give you praise. We celebrate you. We thank you for this wonderful Christmas season. And we give you all honor and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Amen. Well, before we sing our final song of worship this morning, uh, I just want to, uh, I'm going to pray for our, our offering here in just a moment. And, uh, but I would like to, as always, the chance to pray for anybody that is leaving. Is there anybody who's departing this week that's going to be PCSing out of here that uh, this is their final week at, at Guantanamo Bay? Anybody? All right. I feel like we have a slew of them that are coming up here in late December and early January. But uh, okay. Well, fantastic. Well, in just a moment, I want to pray for our offering. And if you're new here, just want to make sure that you understand there is never pressure on this. This is just an opportunity to give back. And uh, all 100% is what is given in our religious offering fund is just given away. We don't use any of it to pay for all of this. This is all um, the, the blessing of being a part of a naval institution. This is all covered. But everything that is given, we just find creative ways to give it back out into the Guantanamo Bay and beyond communities. So um, if God is putting on your heart to be a part of that, let me pray to receive our offering and then our ushers will come forward and receive that. Father, thank you for this chance to give back to you. Thank you for the chance to uh, be a part of what you're doing outside of these walls. Would you continue to give us wisdom and, and great discernment into the best places to uh, distribute these funds and bless others? And that, Lord, at the end of the day, that there will be a sense that you care, uh, that you are watching over, and that uh, you are the one who is blessing. And so uh, we give you praise and thanks for that, and certainly the, the hearts of giving this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as those come around, would you uh, stand with me? And we'll invite the team to join us in one final song. There is strength within our sorrow There is beauty in our tears And you meet us in our morning With a love that cast out fear You are working in our waiting You are sanctifying us When beyond our understanding For teaching us to trust Your plans are still prosper And you have not forgotten us You're with us in the fire and the flood You're faithful and imagine who could understand your ways reigning high above the heavens reaching down in endless grace you're the lifter of the Lord Passionate and kind You surround and you uphold me And your promises are my delight You plans still prosper And you have not forgotten us You with us in the fire
Thank you all for coming today. Would you please join me in prayer? God, thank you for your love for us. Thank you that you're sovereign. God, thank you for the greatest gift, Jesus. God, that during this season, and not just during Christmas, God, but every day, God, that you'd remind us of how much that you love us, and God, that you want to use us to reach others for you, God, to bring the hope of Christ to our neighbors, to our family, and our friends that don't know you. We thank you for this day. Go with us, Lord, wherever we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Just want to let you know, before you head out this morning, this is the first Sunday in a while that we haven't had to wear a mask. And as you go out today, would you introduce yourself to someone that you don't know? Have a great day before and i apologize and i just want to say thank you so much to kit and the team you know uh our uh, worship leader has been off island dennis will be back next week and kit actually is leaving on he's on leave uh he's taking some leave actually starting this week so um we just want to say thank you so much to you guys we know that you have a lot going on and you have really blessed us so can you just give them a, a clap of thanks so much all right awesome thank you guys hey god bless you have a wonderful day thanks buddy.